there's a whole program. It's uh, it's in our DNA um, because part of our nature is and remains animal. It's a biological fact. Friends, we're not meant to live in a confined environment. And we're not meant to be disconnected from the natural world or our own true nature. Chronic pain, immobility, depression, and lack of vitality, these are all symptoms of the zoo human syndrome. Modern society's conditioned us to consider this as normal and unavoidable. Our guest today does not think so. Our guest today is Erwin LaCour. Recognized as the godfather of natural movement, he is the author of The Practice of Natural Movement, Reclaim Power, Health, and Freedom, and founder of MoveNet, a forward-thinking approach to fitness that educates people to physical capability for the real world. Natural movement is a philosophy, practice, and lifestyle based on humanity's ancestral roots. Thank you for joining us today, Erwan. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's my pleasure. Very nice to have you. Thank you, thank you, um, thank you Andrew. And uh, we typically just like to start off by asking, what are you grateful for today? Oh, uh, every single breath to begin with, every single heartbeat, uh, vision to just open my eyes and look around for the beauty, um, to uh, feel the, the, the sun kissing my skin, uh, to um, just wake up and uh, hear my, my, my little, my children uh, already uh, having fun and playing while the little one is still asleep like a, an angel and all this <clears throat> it's a it's a whole whole context I'm grateful for literally this this it's a dream uh, the dream of uh, being alive and uh, every morning and every day and every moment just that alone I think suffices but uh, um, if I ever if I ever had to wonder what I'm grateful for, which never happens, but all I've got to do is to hold my breath for a moment and remember just that, just breathing, just being alive. That's enough. Beautiful. Yeah, hundred percent. That's that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Um, I understand that you split time between New Mexico and a fishing village in Mexico. Is that true? And where are you joining us from today? It was true, absolutely true, until literally very recently where we decided to uh, just uh, be back uh, on our, uh, um, it's our land here, uh, New Mexico. So right now I'm at 8,500 feet elevation. Uh, I'm only confined by this, you know, little vehicle where I am, but otherwise out there, it's just uh, vast expenses and uh, the two chest peaks are right behind. Uh, they are, um, you know, uh, peaking at around 12,000 feet elevation. Uh, they're still completely covered with snow. And um, we have a, an Ezekia running. So an Ezekia is like a little, um, it's like a river stream, just small, and but it was dug by people for irrigation because this is a high desert mountain. So it gets so dry in the summer and irrigation, that's how you, you know, you keep the, the cattle alive and uh, things grow in. And anyway, so it's a beautiful place, uh, like a eagle nest view, 360, you, see, you look, you can see everywhere around. So that's the place uh, where we like to be. So one state we haven't visited very often, uh, more like driven through, but certainly it has a lot to offer. If, have you ever um, been um, in the Southwest? Uh, Utah area, mostly. Yeah. So it's, it's very magical. The whole Southwest, really. It's, uh, it's pretty incredible. But that's if you like uh, arid weather, and, um, um, but also uh, vast expenses, blue skies, amazing sunsets, and um, yeah. The stars at night. Oh, <laughs> oh I woke yeah. Up yeah, actually, yeah, I, I uh, woke up last night and stepped outside. Um, don't tell your people. It's, I was completely naked. And so um, and I looked at the stars and uh, it, there was it was unbelievable. The whole 
uh, Milky Way, um, the whole, uh, you could see every star. Oh, there's no light pollution at this uh, in this place and at this altitude. There's no light pollution. There's no um, air pollution. There's no pollution. <laughs> We've uh, spent quite a bit of time. We lived in Colorado for a number of years and yeah. um, spent a lot of time in the mountains, obviously. And um, one of our favorite places, though, is is the deserts of um, of Utah and the canyon lands of Utah. Um, just spending time out there in the, like you're just mentioning, you know, watching the stars at night and it's, they're just so vibrant and clear and inspiring. We've been there too. Uh, oof. Yeah. So, 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 I mean, America is such an amazing country and the land is so beautiful and powerful. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's um it's incredible that um but again that's a that's a cultural thing and it's uh it's everybody's choice but to um confine oneself not only in homes that much but uh, or in cars that much but also in cities in places where you won't see you won't enjoy a, a horizon you won't enjoy a sky that has not like riddled by planes and uh you won't enjoy a single moment that's not uh um, literally polluted not only the the air but with sounds and like lights and all kind of things and movement and it's uh, um, you can get accustomed to it but it's at the same time it's artificial it's a natural it's very um, stressing to a human uh, to a, a human nervous system so the acclimation is only superficial deep down it's just anyway stressful yeah. So, uh, more nature people. Yes. <laughs> Time Great. in nature is, uh, yeah, one of the our six pillars of, uh, of performance is just uh, rebalancing and spending time and connecting with nature. So, absolutely agree. Yeah. And, well, speaking of natural, Erwin, uh, uh, could you tell us what is natural movement? This episode of Fierce Planet Adventures podcast is brought to you by Five Mountain Coaching. Licensed, unbeatable mind coaching. Integrated, accelerated vertical growth across five domains of cutting-edge development. Designed by retired Navy SEAL Commander Mark Devine. Learn the big four skills of mental toughness and resiliency. Discover the six pillars of performance. Test your metal with custom-created crucibles across all five domains. Visit FiveMountainCoaching.com to schedule your free one-hour unbeatable mind coaching session. That's the number five, mountaincoaching.com. Begin your journey to becoming unbeatable today. What is natural movement? It's very simple. It's the, um, remember yourself. Remember, let's remember ourselves when we we're little kids. Before any, uh, before we got to watch any fitness DVD or <laughs> um, fitness program, or before we got educated to what's the proper way to exercise your muscles or exercise your body, before any instruction, before even we understood words and language, how did we move? And we were already crawling. Um, and crawling, rolling, getting on our little rear or, you know, on our knees and then clumsily trying to stand up and then walk. And, um, there's a whole program. It's, uh, it's in our DNA um, because part of our nature is and remains animal. It's a biological fact. And um, what would be natural movement to a mountain lion, to a deer, to or an elephant in the savanna, to a dolphin in the ocean, and to an eagle up there perched uh, in the in the Rocky Mountains somewhere? Obviously, those would be completely different natural movements, plural. They, they each species would have different movement skills some of them would be the same some of them would be completely different you would be hard pressed asking a dolphin to climb a tree you'd be hard pressed asking um an eagle to swim in the ocean 
or to dive uh, or to run for distance. And uh, you would be hard pressed asking an, an elephant to uh, soar in the sky and uh, to go up somewhere. Obviously, um, each animal species have their own natural movement, which I like to capitalize the N and M. Um, natural movement in each species is the whole scope of particular movement patterns and, and abilities, and then that becomes skills that they use for their own survival and to to thrive, to just uh, express themselves in this in this world, in this uh, reality through movement. And the question is, all right, so aren't we a species, human species, right? We are one of a kind. And so we too have our own natural movement. And what is it? So we look at kids and we understand quickly what it is. We are meant to crawl. We're meant to roll. We're meant to do get ups and get downs. Uh, we're meant then to walk. We're bipedal uh, predominantly. And then we have gait, we have uh, walking and running and jumping and balancing. And then we can also hang and climb and climb up and climb down. And um, we can also manipulate objects. We can lift objects, we can carry them, we can throw them, we can catch them. We also have our own uh, self-defense abilities for movement. We can throw punches and kicks and knees and all kind of things we can we can wrestle we can uh, so we are incredibly versatile we can also swim we can also hold our breath and dive it's incredibly versatile Nat human natural movement might be the most versatile of all um i can't think of any other um animal species <clears throat> that uh, has the same versatility. The scope of our movement abilities in humans is, is, is incredible. So that's what's natural movement to humans. And you, you want to ask yourself how come that most modern humans don't really know how to operate their body in all those ways in a complete fashion and let alone in an efficient fashion means everyone will have to some extent some ability to pretty much everyone to run to jump to maybe crawl on all fours uh, maybe to climb but in most people it might be very limited and um, it doesn't have to be that way. It actually, should not be that way. You know, it has become a norm because it's the, because of the culture, because of all kind of circumstances. It's not supposed to be that way. It's like let's imagine a herd of uh, or pack of of whatever animal species, and um, you you think of like some kind of ex, you know not exuberant, but like like a very. Um, movement-wise, very strong, very capable uh, species, let's say uh, wild horses. And all of a sudden, most of them would be just seriously uh, out of shape and they could barely move and they would need to be parked and uh, literally to lay down all day and never be able to literally run like wild horses and jump over obstacles and go up and down and and you'll be like what happened to them what what's up there what, what happened it's it's sad oh these animals they're normally so magnificent and so capable and so free of free of movement obviously and now they're not and we can't even look at ourselves humans human beings and and look at it the same and be like what, what's going on we're, we're capable of movement. We should be magnificent through our own freedom of movement. Well, that's not the case. And nobody seems to think anything of it. Interesting. That's <laughs> great. Um, well, I, my next question, I, I think you've pretty much 
covered already, but um, I'm going to ask it and just to see if you have a little bit of a twist or anything additional to, to, to ex put exclamation point on it is um, what's the goal of natural movement? And, and as I understand what you said is it's basically for us to reconnect with our inherent, our innate ability to move with nature through nature out of the artificial settings. But is there anything else that I'm missing? Or, well, no, actually, uh, you're absolutely right, Andrew. Um, I'll put it this way. Originally, the purpose of natural movement in humans, just like in any other species, is to keep us alive. We need to move through uh, the real world, through originally through wilderness, basically, uh, in a way that is um, practical for the most part and adaptable. And we need to do that with efficiency effectiveness and efficiency um, so that we don't get hurt so we can escape threats and we can um, proc procure food and all kind of things help each other um, explore new places just like in other species we would have those movements so that we can live the life that is typical of our species right um, what about today well, today, um, if I want to be lazy or just out of convenience, out of just habit, culture, I could just click. And uh, in a few clicks, I've already ordered a, a pizza. That's going to be, you know, and all of a sudden, a few minutes later, knock, knock. Okay, oh, that's your pizza. Uh, I already paid online. Um, it's all prepared for me. Other people did the movement for me and I just get to eat my food. Okay. That's, that's I'm not saying there's nothing really wrong about it. It's, it's actually awesome. That can be quite convenient sometimes like, Hey, uh, <laughs> we don't want to spend uh, two hours learning to how to make a good pizza or uh, just pizza and cook it and everything. And, but we want a pizza. So we want, um, uh, you know, uh, instant gratification or near instant gratification. All right. So those are, um, that's the beauty of the modern world is the incredible amount of conveniences that we have access to. And uh, I would never say that this is in itself bad it's because it can be quite convenient, quite enjoyable to have this kind of comfort. What's killing us is that, um, we can outsource that much. And therefore, our natural movements, those movements that we are supposed to do every day, that we, our, all our ancestors used to do every day, that we used to do, maybe not every day, but a lot more when we were little kids. And then decades later, whoop, that's the car. Uh, we, don't, we don't do that anymore. Um, that that is hurting us because natural movement is a, uh, is a physical, biomechanical, but also a physiological uh, behavior. So when we don't do it, um, there's stagnation. It weakens us, but it's not just a matter of strength and conditioning. It's way beyond that. What happens when we don't have every day this kind of movement behavior physical behavior for the movement that is diverse that's as diverse as natural movement we're not talking about just jogging which is a single movement or doing some kind of muscle isolation like a push-ups or going to the gym and all which is again very limited it's very limited in the scope when you look at it from uh, you know let's say you would have a footage of somebody exercising the modern way without any sound, without any promotion, without any explanation. You would just look at the movement behavior and be like, that's, that's pretty limited. It's very monodimensional. If you were to look at uh, the whole movement behavior of a person who lives actually close to nature, like the hunter-gatherers that remain uh, on, on this planet, it would be so much more diverse and the frequency of movement, but also the, usually the fluidity of movement, the, the 
precision of movement would be there. Uh, you look at modern humans, they are very clumsy. First off, they have to ask themselves, should I exercise or not? So you see the problem is that movement is optional. And then people don't even think of movement. They think in terms of exercise as if it was a chore, something they have to impose to themselves to almost um, sometimes to punish themselves for being so lazy or to just because they have in mind some pretty much unattainable, irrealistic, uh, cosmetic idea of what the body should look like, which is pretty much irrelevant. Uh, instead of uh, considering their overall physical capability and how they could acquire it, develop it, improve it, maintain it, or recover it, so that they would be decently or ready or very prepared in time of need to help themselves or help others to be physically capable, right? Um, for the real world. So what's the real world? Oh, wow. Um, I need to move heavy furniture. I need to help my neighbor move heavy things. Oh, I need to uh, scale that wall or that structure because that's the only way to go uh, you know that could be day-to-day -day movements day-to-day -day situations but that could be life challenging situations you know and and you could say well this is never going to happen to me well how do you know because on the news every day things like that happen and then most of the time people are in trouble not because the situation uh, was necessarily um, overwhelming, but because their inability to physically respond was overwhelming. And, um, and that's just uh, one example, because you want to think of what about your, just your ability to hold a deep squat? Let's say you drop something on the floor and you're just, 50 or 60 and you're already too stiff to just squat and pick up that you know a pair of glasses or something you already you've you've been lacking movement so much for decades without even understanding uh what it did to your body and to your mind um that it has already caused you so many limitations physically and physiologically and um we talk uh, when we talk about freedom maybe movement is a primary form of freedom like when you lose freedom of movement you lose freedom that's it because you can't go through the world with ease and comfort or pain free and that should not be the case so long story short um movement has become optional but truly, it's not. Truly, it's not. And I, I did not even address what it does uh, at a cerebral um, level uh, in terms of cognition, um, how movement is extremely important to health in so many ways because it, it keeps your lymphatic system moving, so which help you, you know, clear out uh, every day. You know, we are metabolic uh, systems. So, you know, we eat and breathe and uh, uh, there's a waste just like in every uh, energy production unit that we are biologically speaking and we need movement to cleanse our bodies to uh, keep our brain there's some kind of movement of breathing of the brain the brain floats in some uh, uh, the liquid there and a breathing a movement activates breathing which then you know keeps the brain function optimum flushes the brain but also uh, one of the specificity of natural movement is its adaptability. It means that you're not just doing a movement like in yoga and you could close your eyes. You do natural movement just, you know, when you guys are hiking out, out, out there and you cannot uh, be like, oh, I'm going to be mindful, close my eyes. No, you're going to be mindful, open your eyes, open your senses, pay attention to where you place your foot because one mistake and that's it. Uh, you just uh, fell into the river. Uh, you just uh, uh, sprain your ankle and you're in a bad shape. So 
what happens is that when you have to be that mindful, which you have always to be mindful and adaptable so that you can do the movement efficient, efficiently and safely, your brain is much more engaged. And what it does is that it boosts brain function. It supports what's called neurogenesis, which is the production of, of neurons, the renew, uh, neurons, the re renewal of uh, neurons. There's so many good things um, that happen at a, at a brain function level. And I would, uh, let's say, summarize that all by saying, it's not that much that being outside and being in movement frequently is good for you. Like, wait a minute, it's not good for you? Of course, it's great for you. But what you want to look at is the, you know, or reverse your perspective. It is to always be inside and to not move much. That is, it's, it's hurting you really. It's like really, really, really bad. So don't look at movement, natural movement and being outside as just as a mere, mere option that you may consider, oh yeah, maybe I should do that one of those days that could be good for me. No, like you're already in a bad spot. Look at, you don't do it every day. It means that you are doing something else that is actually keeping you in a state of stagnation and weakness confinement it's not just your body it's your whole mind your eyes don't look at the horizon your whole body and your brain does not feel the rhythm of your whole whole self biological self moving through the world it's a lack of life in your life so i gotta say very well said <laughs> i thinking uh while you were explaining that uh how we tend to just latch on to the idea of getting in physical shape means to look good and to be muscular or tone. And <clears throat> I certainly have found the same when I did work out, obviously I felt better, uh, but being confined to that gym space as compared to being outside and in that natural rhythm of the walking pace and being able to watch everything around me at the same time. And it just makes such a difference in the feeling and the mental state. And so, yeah, I completely agree. Absolutely. And um, <clears throat> we talk about, well, we talk, we hear a lot uh, talking about um, the, the, the mental health um, predicament in modern society. And um, what that mental health predicament is um it's basically um the outcome of extremely drained and um and upset nervous systems that we are and uh, uh physiological uh ecosystems that we are that are uh, uh, deprived from um um from life from natural movement like the natural movement that of one's whole body whole all the fluids in your body all the interaction with gravity with the world with all all those behaviors and uh, what happens through our senses what we see through our eyes what we feel in our feet in our body through our movement all of that it's it's, it's a timeless necessity that it's a biological reality that does not go away just because we got civilized. All right. Okay. So, okay. For the conveniences. Okay. For some comfort, but if you don't step out of that comfort zone, it shrinks so bad that in the end you are a very stressed person physiologically, but also at the nervous system level and the nervous system level you know, what makes us feel good in our mind uh, or not, you know, relaxed, confident, or the opposite, you know, like a tense, uh, scared, um, upset, uh, all kind of uh, negativity of our, of our uh, mental state, emotional state, that, <clears throat> that's in the nervous system. Because that's what we are. We're a big nervous system. And um, there is a psychophysiology and physiopsychology. So physiopsychology is whenever the nervous system that you are 
uh, that's attached to the, uh, you know, embedded in the whole body with all these cells and organs and skins and bones and all fascia and all of that, you know. Um, that biological unit is not functioning the way it's supposed to. It does not get the sunlight. Uh, it doesn't get the movement. Doesn't get the exposure to nature. It doesn't get the the sleep. It doesn't get um, the right food. You know, healthy food, clean food. Um, so it's hurting the. It literally, I mean, I don't. I can't use another word. It's literally impacting negatively. Okay, let's say not hurting impacting negatively don't want to hurt anybody's feelings um impacting negatively your physiology so what happens then is that it's impacting your psychology so maybe you don't have a problem with uh, maybe you do but uh maybe you don't have that much a problem with you know uh, yourself and your you know uh you know, what happens to you in your life and, you know, finding yourself and all. And maybe you do, but maybe it's part of, let's say, some of the issues a person may have in their life. But if they could already look at what they do and don't do to their body, to their ecosystem, um, and confining it, depriving it again from the light, the movement, the water, the, 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 from nature, the nature outside and nature within, then it's gonna it's going to make you your nervous system completely upset so that's physiopsychology it's how um inadequate uh treatment or management uh or environment and behavior of your body is going to negatively impact your mind your mental state and your emotional state and then conversely how a, a nervous system you know we're talking about the limbic brain right the, the animal part of the of self that is uh of balance <clears throat> that's also going to create a whole deal of chain reactions in your body in your physiology through hormones stress hormones and then inflammation and you know it's going to disrupt your sleep and everything so we're talking about psychophysiology so it, you know, it goes like that, you know, it's just like the, the autonomic nervous system. There's the sympathetic and the parasympathetic and they need to be balanced. So, you know, like the mind body connection and the body mind connection, all of that needs to be balanced. So what's natural movement? So lifestyle that makes you reconsider that you're not just a mind trapped in some kind of a cage up there and your whole life should be lived through the lens of your thinking especially overthinking and if you find yourself overthinking it's because you don't feel you don't want to feel you know you 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 that's all you've got left is thinking and so movement is going to help you meditate in some way it's going to help you calm down your nervous system it's going to make you think less think better think different feel more be more embodied be more in your body and one of the reasons is again adaptability um if, if, for instance yoga is wonderful but if you do yoga you may close your eyes you are on a flat ground it's all predictable you do not have an interaction with the external world let alone with nature the difference between doing that and actually stepping outside and walking, just walking, just hiking on a wild natural terrain is phenomenal because it's actually, not only it's also mindful, it's actually more mindful because that there's that unconscious part of your brain that just needs to pay attention and that cannot avoid to retreat from the world it has to engage with the world and that's where the gold is yeah I, I could totally relate right um i find myself if i'm not out in nature you know for a period of time i find myself you know becoming stressed not thinking very well and it's 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 kind of a harbinger right i need to get out i need to get on the trail i need to move in nature and it's a great place for me to, to, to work on issues or problems, mental problems that I'm having, you know, um, uh, 
like, how do I overcome this? Or how do I fix that? And, or, you know, how do I work better within the team, one of the teams I'm in? And it usually takes a few miles on the trail before that process really kicks in, right? And the farther away for, or the, far, the, the, the more time I spend away from the trail, the longer it takes for me to get back into that spot. But something magical happens about the two to three mile mark where mm -hmm. my thinking just opens up, possibilities, solutions come forth, um, almost maybe a form of intuition, I guess. Absolutely. Uh, uh, so I uh, have the exact same experience. There's nothing like a good hike to uh, uh, find solutions to, uh, to, to, some, to whatever, to find insights, to have intuition. It's not, it's not almost as if it's literally there are parts of your brain that operate um, um, it, 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 in the background and um, it's cognition, not just because um, like even a, a thought is not necessarily happening because you think um, or uh, uh, the, 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 the thought Thoughts are like uh, the the flowers or the the I don't know the fruits of the mind, um, um, but uh, no flower, no fruit is um, is produced uh, without the whole tree and the root system and the light and the whole ecosystem. So we look at our own thoughts as if they were the end all and be all, but a lot of our psyche and consciousness happens in a thoughtless way um, at, in a, at different layers, different spaces of, we could say, of our brain, our neurology, or our psyche, or wherever it is that is located, our consciousness. Um, and nature and movement helps that a lot. And... Um, so, in, so sometimes it's not sometimes ideally instead of s staring at issues and entering negative loops about um, issues in our mind, we're just going to walk. We let go uh, instead of we don't sit on it. We walk on it. We hike on it. And then we walk with relaxation with um, it helps us relax anyways. And we have confidence that uh, the solutions are on their way because we are um, open, because we're confident, because we have faith, because we're positive, because there's no reason that uh, we would stay stuck because solutions are always somewhere. And sometimes we don't need to look for them. We just need to find them. And so... When you walk, uh, often you don't even look for solutions. You just know that you're going to find them because your consciousness is operating at a different level and probably a more effective, efficient way. And in the end, we call it intuition. Oh, I have this intuition. Well, trust me, the intuition, just, it didn't happen like that. That was a whole path and process until, poof, it, it is delivered to you in the form of a clear thought that is the solution. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. You gotta set the stage for that intuition to set the stage and do the work for that intuition, for your intuition to come forth and, and present itself. If you enable it. Mm -hmm. You've got to enable it. And so uh, it's hard to enable it if you are scrolling in the you know, social media all the time, uh, looking at negative uh, news 24-7, uh, um, sitting on your rear and not moving, or, or thinking and thinking and thinking, thinking about problem, like literally staring at the problem, but not having any openness to solving to even the existence of a solution or a set of solutions. So it's a mindset thing, but definitely walking moving in nature just moving that could be dancing by the way that could be doing yoga that could be 
focusing on your breath. That could be breath holding, that could be praying, that could be singing, anything different, but has a, a side, not a side, a component of mindfulness, but also of, uh, so that would be side of mindfulness as in focus and at the same time a side of I don't even pay attention in some ways I let go it's paradoxical but I know you guys know exactly what we're talking about no this is perfect this is this is right in, you know, right in that sweet spot of, of what we're doing and the message that we're sharing with everyone um if it's okay with you, um, I'd like to shift focus a little bit. And I think you've done a really great job of explaining and setting up the, the transition here is, so so now what? And, and that now what is, is MoveNet. And that is a program. I'll, I'll let you explain, explain it uh, for our listeners. And I've definitely got some targeted questions around it. The inspiration behind that is I, everything that you've just said, right, is is getting outside, getting ourselves reconnected with nature, using our inherent abilities um, as the vehicle for fitness. And, right. Yeah. Uh, so, well, th there's, there's that, Andrew. There's, look, if I put it very simply, very, very simply, MoveNet, the program, the fitness program, what it is to me. Well, it's the physical education program that I wish I had received and, you know, uh, been through as a kid. And that I actually never received. Right. So I go to school, you go to school, we all go to school and pretty much the same all around the world. You go to school and there's pretty much almost no physical education. And number one, so huge problem already means, wait, so we are supposed to be educated and that so we become grown ups that are independent, uh, capable and all. And it makes sense that we learn to read and write and, you know, basic math and all these kind of things. But every year, millions of kids get out of school. They have no clue how to operate their own body. Okay. So they're not physically educated at all. At all. And it's not, it's not something that anybody says anything about. Like, it's not a problem, apparently. Um, I mean, what, like you're a grown up, but you're not actually grown up. You're grown up. You, you don't know how you, you. Your body is still alien to you. You can't. You don't even know how. You, you, maybe you could could not even tell us where your liver is or your heart is. Let alone, I don't know. Uh, show me any kind of uh, practical movement. So, what should be uh, to me a, a real physical education program it's a it's a program that would educate individuals so young kids to do by the way what they by instinct try to do but that we repress them and prevent them and leave, leave, limit them from doing um it would be becoming able to operate your body in the real world to be equipped with the physical and mental skills so that uh, in time of need, they can be helpful, helpful to themselves and helpful to others. In what way? Well, how about, how about you, you know how to lift and carry a person? And only you know the diverse techniques you could do that because techniques are involved, just like in a martial art. Um, but you would have developed through your childhood and teenage time and then going on you would maintain that for a lifetime you would have the strength the coordination you know the balance the skills the skills of lifting the skill of carrying the skill of running and jumping and landing without falling or without sometimes hesitating you know just the, the confidence in yourself confidence about your physical capability based on actual capability. Uh, so physical capability, that's two things to me. That's competency and capacity. So competency is neuromuscular. It's, uh, you know, the software is in your brain to use like a more or less good metaphor, but um, 
Uh, it is uh, the skills, the, the way you move that's efficient or not. And then capacity is physiological adaptations. Uh, so in the form of strength, uh, power, endurance, uh, speed, um, uh, all these kind of things. And so you combine both and you should train both at the same time. And then uh, you have capability. And then experience of uh, uh, some situations. So, to me, this is much more important than knowing the 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 rules of basketball or whatever game. And not that playing games and sports isn't cool, um, but it's, to me, it's not primary important. Um, because, for instance, yesterday I took my kids uh, to a local um, play uh, um, skateboard park. There were like maybe fifteen teenagers. I like what they do. It's cool, you know, they're learning to um, skateboard. But all of them were skinny. Be like, oh, that's great. They're skinny, so they're in shape. No, they're not in shape at all. Um, you could tell they're 15 years old. These kids have never done a pull-up or a push-up, and I'm pretty sure that that would take them on the run, and they would be winded with that within two minutes. And so I'm not. These kids are 15 years old, 17, 18, whatever. And they should already be, to me, in my worldview, they should look like athletes. They should be not, you know, world level athletes. That's not what I'm talking about. But you could, in my opinion, kids should, at this stage of their life, already clearly they look like they know what is to move. They know what is to run and climb something and swim and lift something heavy and do all these things. Not just skateboard, not just basketball. All right. And teenagers and all the people and, um, you know, uh, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 50s 60s, it doesn't matter. Um, so to me, MoveNet, that's the program that educate people regardless of who they are, regardless of what they look like, regardless of the background, because that's a truly a universal Um I would prefer to live in a world where I know that most people are physically capable than in a world where I know that most people are physically inept and out of shape. And, uh, you know, it's like everybody lives. It's like an out of the body experience, literally. They're not in their body. <laughs> yeah. So what, one of the questions that came up for me as I was, as looking at uh, going through your website is, um, you know, what if I'm like, you know, 40, 50 years old, maybe I, I've got some mobility issues. I'm not in the best shape right now. Can I do move Nat? Um, so that's the thing is that we've got a method and um, the method is precisely designed so that uh, you don't have to be intimidated and be like, wow, like, I love what the guy says and this is philosophy. I, I get it and it's true. And I, I should have more capability in my body uh, and, and all that, but there's no way that I can run or jump and do all these things. Well, we have a method that's precisely designed to first off, be safe. Secondly, be progressive means that wherever, whatever is your current ability, that's where you, you start. You know, we're not asking you to do anything that you can't, physically do that you're not ready to do uh with your body that right? would be unsafe for you to do and then we have this a uh, very unique way to break down the simplest movements into parts that you can um, learn and uh, practice until you can recompose complete movements with more efficiency with more fluidity we have um, a diverse way to have you move somewhere we we would just ask you to do a movement with little instruction and just enjoy and have fun. And others where we'll be like, wait, stop. Okay, now you're going to pay attention to this. Um, and that could be just pay attention to the way you breathe. See, you are you, you hold your breath and then you're very stiff. So just learn to relax and breathe through the nose and breathe with a good pace. And in other ways would be like, hey, uh, you may not jump over that big obstacle, but you can jump from here to there. And that's just not even one foot. And just learn already to place the ball of your foot first and to not let your knees cave in and to relax and to have the right sequence of your arms and, you know, like a bit of observation of what is the pattern that you use in. So there are different ways to teach a person or 
uh, each individual to move better. And when you start to move better, then you can move more and more frequently and with more intensity, you know, step by step. And then you have more and more self-confidence and more and more, it boosts your brain, brain, brain function, et cetera, et cetera. So it literally can bring some people back to life. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, trying to be mindful of time. Um, this is really exciting. And, and I'm super stoked to, to start uh, on this journey here with uh, MoveNat. And what, what's, what's a good place for someone to start? Uh, so we have uh, movenat.com, obviously, M-O-V-N-A-T.com. Um, it's great to pay a visit to the website to begin with. Uh, we have uh, um, a serious uh, amount of uh, free material. Um, if you sign up to our newsletter, you'll get uh, weekly what we call maps. So they are uh, free workouts. Um, but again, they are those workouts are more based on uh, moving and moving and enjoying the pleasure of movement and learning a bit of uh, efficiency on the way, then exertion alone. It's not about like, okay, we're going to give you a good sweat. You, you can have that. You can retrain high level with MoveNet, like a really intense kind of workouts, but that's not the primary, uh, that's not the starting point for most people. Um, so we have videos for that. And then uh, we have online coaching. We have online courses. Uh, and we have uh, just until the the end of the year alone, uh, 2021, we have more than 100 events, means like workshops taking place worldwide, most of them actually outside. So good news if you've been feeling confined like all of us, or pretty much all of us for uh, too long, those workshops are going to take place outside. Yeah. Fantastic. So. Um, uh, whoever you are, there's going to be some ways that you can get started with some natural movement. You know, we, you'll find example on how to start doing it in your, um, in your uh, backyard or uh, in your living room. Um, just uh, you'll get a two by four board and you'll start to do simple balancing movements on it. Well, maybe watching TV if you really have to, but or uh, just uh, you could do that with your spouse, with your kids, grandkids um it's all about you know delving back in in a safe and pleasurable way pleasant way but also effective way back into what's your birthright birthright of natural movement human natural movement you should be again uh, we all should be frequently moving in all fours balancing jumping and landing hanging swinging climbing and have fun challenge ourselves be a little bit stronger and healthier every day and that's a good life it's a good thing oh, to do 100 i love it it's have good. fun with it yep great thank you guys so much um i think my battery is almost like so <laughs> if it goes like back out it's just just because the battery is it's not giving me a chance um but I've really enjoyed this conversation. Uh, thank you so much for uh, having uh, interest in my work. And thank you so much for sharing uh, you know, the message from really good people who do great work, just like you do. Um, and uh, helping us uh, modern zoo humans um, to get out of the, the cages of conventions and to reclaim a more uh, joyful, health, healthy, um, capable um, life because we're meant to thrive. And that's the truth. Thank you, Erwin, so much for your time. We are very honored to have you on. God, this is all super fascinating for us and we can't wait just to dive even deeper into it. So. <laughs> Thank you so much, Casey. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, and let me know uh, whenever uh, you'd like to attend one of our workshops and I'll definitely facilitate that. Maybe that could be um, something we talk about next time on your podcast. Oh, that would be absolutely wonderful. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your, uh, your day, sir. And uh, we will uh, be connecting in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise. And uh, until next time, everybody be well and take care. Take care of yourself.